So I've been doing some research on what kind of hardware the majority of the gamers use nowadays. I chose Steam statistics to figure out which parts are the most popular in 2024. Let's start with the graphics card. I actually predicted a long while ago that RTX 3060 would become the most popular GPU this year. The reason behind it was that the people just love huge amounts of VRAM. Now whether it's actually useful or not is mostly relevant because the fact is that GPUs with a lot of VRAM age better and they sell better. I've been working on computers for many years now and I kinda understand how the market works and what the customers want. You'll be impressed how many people measure GPU's power by its VRAM amount. Of course it's not the right way to do it, but I honestly don't blame them. When you don't have enough knowledge about something, generally bigger number means better. But not always, not in the tech world at least. In terms of RAM, I thought that 32 gigs would be either number one or really close to number one spot, but it seems that the majority of the people still game on 16 gigabytes. Let's see how many CPU cores are the most popular. No surprise here, 6 cores is what the most gamers use nowadays and I don't think we're gonna move to 8 cores anytime soon. There's still a big difference between the amount of people that use 6 and 8 core CPUs. Currently, a good 6 core CPU is all that you need to play any game at any settings. But the question is, how does a computer with this configuration game in 2024? By the way, we'll be testing every game at 1080p resolution because that's what the majority of the people are using right now. Let's begin with Dota 2. Now even though this game isn't that demanding, we're only getting about 150 FPS on ultra settings. The reason behind it is that the game engine simply cannot utilize the hardware well enough because the game itself is more than a decade old. Besides, we don't really get any advantage from having high FPS in this game. But anyway, no complaints here, a computer such as this will run Dota 2 on the highest settings without any problems. Same goes for CS2. Now even though we can run this game on the highest settings, I decided to set the graphics to high because I think that's a good middle ground between having good visuals and high FPS. Nowadays, the majority of the gamers are using 144Hz monitors, or at least are looking to buy them. CS2 in particular looks great with VSync on, which is something I recommend having enabled because it not only gets rid of the screen tearing, but it also makes everything look a lot smoother. Valorant on the other hand is a game where you're gonna have so much FPS that it's gonna stop mattering at some point. Now whether that point is 144 FPS, 200 or 400 changes from person to person. Some people believe that you're gonna do better by having more FPS and some believe that it doesn't even matter at all. I personally enjoy having VSync on in every game, assuming that the refresh rate of your monitor is 144Hz or more, but obviously everyone should play on the settings that they enjoy. We are testing this game on the highest settings because we are heavily CPU limited. This game just doesn't stress the GPU nearly enough for us to be even close to getting bottlenecked by our GPU. Anyhow, we averaged around 320fps with these settings. Let's move on to another game, GTA 5. Here I chose ultra settings because I think that's the most fitting for this game. But in case you wanna have more than 100 FPS, you can always set the graphics to high or even lower than that and you're gonna have no trouble achieving upwards of 150 FPS, depending on the settings of your choice of course. Fortnite is also one of those games where you're gonna have a lot of choices for the settings. You can either play on DirectX 12 with better visuals or you can choose to play on DirectX 11 or performance mode and have a much higher FPS. I personally enjoyed playing on performance mode the most because this game is just too stuttery and having high FPS kinda removes that stutter altogether. Besides, Fortnite is an action intensive game and I think it wouldn't hurt to have some extra FPS. Like many other low demanding games, Minecraft also ran without a problem on the highest settings. Now depending on how many chunks you set the render distance to, you're gonna get various results. But I chose to set it to 12 chunks, and as we see, we are getting hundreds of FPS. Of course a computer like this is way too overkill for Minecraft, unless you enable ray tracing, which I cannot test sadly because I'm playing on T-Launcher, but from the tests that I saw on the internet, this computer should be able to play Minecraft with ray tracing enabled at 60fps. Red Dead Redemption 2. Here I chose a balanced or number 10 preset in the settings. 
This game in particular is quite demanding on the GPU, because even though we are on number 10 out of 20 presets, we can barely even sustain 60 plus FPS. Which is mostly fine, the game looks and plays well on these settings, but it seems that 12 gigs of VRAM is not doing us any favors, the game stresses the GPU core a lot more than anything else, which is a lot different from Witcher 3. We are running this game on Ultra Plus settings and we have SSR turned off, which is simply a budget retracing effect that you don't even notice if it's on or not, but it takes a lot of performance away from your GPU. With these settings, we're getting a solid 70 plus FPS in the cities and about 90 to 100 outside where there are a lot less things to load. Of course, we can always turn DLSS on in most of these games, but I don't think it's really necessary since we are already playing most of the games on pretty high settings at 60 plus FPS. Besides, it's a lot more visible when an upscaling method is used on a 1080p rather than a 2K or a 4K resolution. The last game on our list is Cyberpunk. On high settings without any upscaling, we are averaging around 70 FPS. No stutters to be seen as you should expect from such a PC, and the gaming experience is as smooth as it can get. Nothing to really add here. Overall, I think this gaming PC did just about as good as I expected it to. I don't think people would be gaming on this hardware if they were not good enough for today's standards. I would say that this PC falls somewhere in the middle between a high-end PC and the minimum of what is necessary to have an enjoyable experience in 2024. On that note, let's wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.